Changing pace completely now, our research house 10,000 Feet has released its list of the top 10 franchise systems in Australia for 2011. The winners are based on survey replies from more than 3,000 franchisees in more than 80 franchise systems. To talk about the results, I'm joined by 10,000 Feet's head of research, Ian Crowitz. Ian, thank you very much for coming in. Um, uh, talk to me first of all, uh, some of the, well, if you look through kind of the top 10, we've got uh, two of the top three are actually um, mortgage uh, franchises why why are they so popular why are they doing so well well I guess mortgage brokers naturally have a very good business model uh, which is well suited to franchising in essence for a mortgage broker they get a recurring revenue trail income mm -hmm. and so that enables them in tougher times to still have a, a good income coming through uh, we measure a whole series of factors one of those is financial another is something like lifestyle the support you get from your franchisor and, and the passion you have for your business and mortgage brokers and the likes of Smartline or, or Mortgage Choice who are in that top three as well. Um, they certainly have uh, that, that revenue coming through, but it enables a franchisee to take their foot off the pedal a little bit when they want to address that work-life balance. And uh, although it may not look like it from the outside looking in, it's something that franchisees really get passionate about. Uh, getting people into their own homes is, a, is an Australian dream. So mm -hmm. I think mortgage broking uh, certainly ticks a lot of the boxes when it comes to franchisee satisfaction. Um, Smartline personal mortgage has taken out the number one position. It's not the first time it's, mm. it's been in that. What, what is it about Smartline that, that's made it so, I suppose, popular among franchisees? Yeah, well, this is the third year in a row for, for Smartline. Uh, and I think the, the really great thing about them is their culture, that they've been able to be so consistent over those three years speaks a lot to their support team mm. um, and the way they, uh, they support their franchisees to be successful. Uh, Smartline maybe aren't a, a household brand name. They don't put a huge amount of effort effort into to the brand side of things, but they certainly channel a lot of effort and resource into creating efficient systems for their franchisees and certainly supporting them with one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring from uh, their support staff. One of the things that I suppose stands out about this list of 10 is there's only one in there. I mean, the majority of them are, are service-based franchises. Mm franchises. Um, there's only one in there that's food and that's Mrs Fields mm. um, and I guess a lot of the conversations that we've been having around the franchise market in the last couple of years have been around things like uh, you know coffee and obviously I, I guess it's because as a consumer the things that you see most of the time are in shopping malls and mm. they are food related businesses but they haven't really come off that well in terms of um, being liked or enjoyed or, or supported I suppose by the franchisees. Yeah, look, every system is different, but I think it, over the last uh, yeah, year or so, we've had some softer retail conditions, which has made it a bit more mm. challenging. The other thing is our, our survey looks holistically at a whole range of factors. Um, revenue is not just one or visibility of the brand. Mm. Food franchises are great from a brand perspective, um, but you've got to look at it and say, for a lot of food businesses, there's some long hours you need to put in, uh, and it just depends on the systems and the structure that that franchise has in place. So, for example, Mrs. Fields is a business where uh, it's got a fairly simple operating model. The, the preparation time is a little bit less than uh, some other food type of businesses uh, and they're scoring well uh, and they've done so consistently. So uh, I think there's still a lot of good performers in that food sector. Uh, we're just finding there's some other guys in other industries that across the, the board are performing better. Okay. Um, and interesting, a, a, new, a, a newcomer to the list is um, Anytime Fitness. What, what do they do? What's that the franchise model sort of doesn't have, I suppose, as many staff as others? Yeah, so Anytime Fitness is really interesting. If you look at the, the models out there for uh, fitness businesses in particular, you look at the Fernwood Women Health Clubs, mm -hmm. um, who are probably a bigger format, and there's a lot of personal training there, right down to a curves or contours where there's a lot of one-on-one contact. Uh, in the Anytime Fitness model, it's a 24 7 hour, 24 hours, 7 day uh, setup. Uh, but the franchisee themselves doesn't need to be there all the time. Uh, there's not as much It'd personal be difficult, training. wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Bit, yeah. So what they do instead is they've got security cameras to, to man the, uh, the operation and just check everything's in working order uh, for health and safety as well. So it means on average, uh, franchisees for Anytime Fitness are working 20% fewer hours. Uh, than the, the, the franchising industry average. So it's certainly working very well for Anytime Fitness. They've grown to 70 franchisees in three years in Australia uh, and have sold another 100 territories in that short time as well. Wow, sounds like a good way to do business. Ian, thank you. Cheers. Good to meet Thanks, you. Guys.